Welcome. This is green antelope horn, Asclepius viridis, and we're taking a closer look at it during the milkweed discovery series. I'm your host, Brad Grimm. Today we venture out into this wonderful grassland, which is in the backyard of a central Texas neighborhood. Right now the plant is in full bloom. However, some of the plants in the nearby area have already uh, bloomed and gone to seed. This particular plant is a, uh, it's a beautiful example of Asclepius viridius. Normally this plant uh, you might expect on the Asclepius species to have opposed leaves. What we're looking at here is leaves that are, they're generally opposed. However, a number of them just don't follow the rules. They're not whirled. Um, they're not they're not alternating in being opposed. They're just kind of doing their own thing. The leaves are, are growing really unpredictable. Let's take a look at the, the bloom here. The bloom size, all these flowers are gonna be equal size when they're mature, but right now there's some large blooms and some small blooms. Noticing that the blooms are at different lengths on, that pet, on the uh, petiole is a great indicator that it is viridius and not Asperula. The Asperula blooms all reach maturity at the exact same time. However, Viridius can do it at a different time. In, a diff in addition to that, you've also got plants that are maturing at a different rate. So here's a one that's got uh, the flowers are open. But what, what we've got here is normally on the Asclepius, you'll get one stem and that one stem is going to be topped with a flower. But I see two flower tops on this plant. That's right, it's branching. Let's take a closer look at the branching on here. You got that stem getting really wide in here. It's like really thick. And then it branches. You almost don't even notice it. And then it branches and then it starts to work its way up as two separate stems. This is really cool. It's, it doesn't always happen, but uh, Viridius can, can branch something that might've caused it. There could have been some insect caused it to like, uh, kind of grow slowly. And then maybe it decided it would just branch and then, uh, grow that way. It's hard to say what caused the branching. It doesn't always occur, but it can. It's a fairly upright plant. And the flowers always occur at the top. Now when the insect successfully pollinates Asclepius, it'll get its leg caught in there as it's nectaring. Then it's gonna create the seed pod. And the seed pod is actually a fruit. And this is the mature fruit. The seeds are dispersed by wind. And you can see this is a perfect dispersal method on this windy grassland that we're on. What will happen is that seed pod begins to dry and is generally going to release the seeds far and wide as far as the wind can carry them. Sometimes that's not very far at all. Other times it can be miles and miles depending on the weather conditions and how well that seed is attached to the uh, coma. It sits right on top and that's how it gets its name antelope horns. In this case green antelope horns. because it sits there and that seed pod looks like uh, the horn of a antelope sticking up out of the grassland. Now I said usually the seeds are spread far and wide. Something's going on on this plant. This seed hasn't even left the leaf. There's three seeds sitting right on the leaf and you got all that silky coma, just, just a tattered mess right there. All these seeds are going to fall right next to this plant. Those aren't being dispersed as you might expect. And that's totally fine. But that seed pod did open up nicely. And those are beautiful ripe seeds right there. Just a little bit messy. Could be because of aphid honeydew or something simple like that. 
could be because of bugs. Maybe the bugs cause the seeds to open in a strange way. Here we've got, looks like a young instar milkweed beetles. These might be small milkweed bugs or large milkweed bugs. Didn't spend enough time to identify them. Yeah, probably large milkweed bugs. What they like to do is they like to feed on the seed pod. They feed with a proboscis, which is, uh, it's not really, it's a sucking mouth part. So what they do is they, they suck the sap and they suck the sap out of the seeds. So this would be a, a plant that I would not collect seeds from because those seeds could be compromised by the milkweed bugs feeding. Now, a couple of weeks ago, this one already opened up and released its seeds. So when the seed pod successfully releases its seeds, it's got this nice looking empty seed pod. This is almost perfect form for all plants in the Asclepius. It's got that seed pod. All the coma is gone. The coma is all the uh, silk that the seeds disperse on. And all that's left is that little structure on the inside of the uh, milkweed seed pod. Beautiful. The flowers are also very beautiful. These flowers, as all the Asclepius, are going to have five petals, five sepals, five hoods, and five horns. Now the Paulinia is going to be two. There's a pollen packet inside of there. There's actually five individual pollen packets with two pollinia, pollinaria attached to it, connected by a corpusculum. And it's pollinated mechanically by the leg of insects. So large wasps, honeybees, native solitary bees, they're going to pollinate this plant. Really appreciate you taking a look at this plant. This one's great. I've got seeds available at growmilkweedplants.com slash store. I'll put a link down in the show description if you want to buy seeds. Asclepius viridius, green antelope horn.